So if you look at like the non-Muslims, right, they call it love. They're probably young love, puppy love, whatever mm. love, yeah. 30, My four. first one. How many of these last? Look at their relationship. How many, like, look at them when they're 20s and 30s, when they're married or whatever, yeah. How many of them is with their first boyfriend? Mm. I can I can probably 100%, zero. Hundred percent. Probably zero. Hundred percent. Rarely, maybe like one in a million or, mm. or ten thousand. Do you understand? So it's like, as you said, it's a protection that before this guy even touches me, he better sh go to my dad and convince him that he's gonna commit, and he's better he better make it public and let the people know that he's gonna take care of me. And that's another thing as well, it's from the nature, the way Allah has created uh, a woman, is that, you know, they seek attention. They like attention. They see, I mean, that's, that's natural. Natural, yeah. Do you get They're it? wonderful, beautiful. Exactly, they're wonderful, beautiful. But that's another Back in the days, I remember when Sam's used to just kind of was up and running, two for two. Probably should, probably he'll take her. Yeah. Okay, I'm being serious, it's raw. Yeah, and he, you're now thinking you're loved. He's taking you to Sam's in a ghetto area and he's buying you two for two. Burgers, and he's saying we're going halves on this. Akhi, subhanahu wa ta'ala, ukhti fillah. Yani, my sister in Islam, do you really think this man values you or loves you? He's buying you sams, okay, which and cost then, £2, I remember, and then it went up to 2 50 okay, and then the drinks, and they're going to buy you a little Pepsi or whatever, and then he's going to be like, well, we, we, you know, this is the first date, and this, you know how, you know, he's showing you now that he loves you by taking you to sams and buying you £2. And that's basically every other week he'll do that, and you think you're loved. You think yeah, this might protect my future husband. He doesn't love you. He doesn't. He doesn't have no respect for you. نعم الرفيق لطالب السبل التي تفضي إلى الخيرات والإحسان تفضي إلى الخيرات والإحسان بسم الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله once again, alhamdulillah, another episode on MSO Raw Discussions with my dear brother Bassam. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Habibi. It's good to have you back, akhi. And I think, to be honest, the topic at hand is one that's crucial, one that's important, and one that's needed. And not many, as we said, we were talking about earlier, yeah. not many actually talk about it. And for all those listening, may Allah, Azza, first of all, make it sincere for his sake and make accept it from us and make it of benefit. To all those listening, it's what you said, isn't it? It's not something where we are the best and most experienced yeah. of the topic or of the thing, but rather it's just something that if we don't talk about it and no one else does, then how is it going to be addressed? Yeah. And how are we going to be able, as a community, be able to, you know, move together? And as Allah mentioned in the Quran, the mu'minin." You know, remind, as verily, the reminders benefits the believers. So the topic is... About marriage, yeah. Any, how does one get married? What's the benefits of marriage, and problems that one's, you know, couples face, and so on and so forth. Talking about so many different things, but I think before we delve into that, I want to know, okay, from your opinion, and that which you can see, what's why should a person? You know, what's the benefits of marriage with regards to Islam? Okay, and, so, and generally as well, society. What does it help? Please. بسم الله والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فاللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين So, بارك الله فيك أخي You have raised a very important issue uh, being very involved in your community You have observed and being in touch with the Shabab, the youth, you have observed this great problem. Yeah. And this pandemic, as you have, you know, pretty much described of the frequent divorces, yeah. and failed marriages yeah. in, the, in, in the practicing community. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, both of us having gone and studied in Saudi and graduated in Walilah Alhamdulillah. Alhamd. Hopefully we can facilitate something of the knowledge that we have and likewise you having married for over 10 years and having 
for kids, you know, with your experience, you can also spread some of your wisdom. And <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm experienced, but yeah, I need, that is, we can, we can that's try. That's what I was saying, like, because there are many people that are like, that have 20, 30 years, 40 years of experience, mm. but they're not, they're not coming to speak about it. Yeah, it's yeah. either like a taboo or they're embarrassed. That's one thing I have noticed, it's a big taboo yeah. to speak about. When Islam is like, at the end of the day, if there's problems yeah. and it's under your nose, you can see it. Why not speak about it? Yeah, Akhi, the Prophet this is how Allah direct he was. A shab, a youth came to me and said, Eat the leaf is zina. I said, Give me permission to come with zina. The people like, oh, as a jaruhu, you know, they're like, Rapper, what are you doing? You, like, you know, they were like, yeah. they were angry. Like, how can you speak to the messenger? I'm like, He stopped them. And he gave him, he said, Do you like, for, do you want the people to come with zina with your mum? With your sister? He said, No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm paraphrasing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the Prophet made dua from Ya Allah, Tahir Qalbahu. Like, Ya Allah, purify this young Allah. youth's heart. Allah. And he kept saying to him, Neither do the people want it for their mother yeah. or their sister yeah. or their auntie. Mm. Do you understand? For you to just fulfill your need and abandon them like that, mm. like they're trash, some, yeah. Yeah. You know, some leftover meat. Mm. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> and um, as you've noticed, like, as you've mentioned and um, observed, this is becoming a trend. Um, unfortunately, within the practicing community, because when a person not practice, he's not he doesn't care about marriage. <laughs> Do you understand? That's true. Yeah. So when he's practice, he cares about marriage, mm. but then he only cares uh, within the realms of fulfilling his needs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Often. Yeah. It yeah. seems. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. Like obviously, we're not judging people of course, here. Yeah. yeah. So um, there are many solutions which Islam presents, and there is a tariqa. There is a method to marriage. And um, the, obviously, we would start with mention the benefits of marriage, right? Yeah. So the f- there are many benefits, and from the prime ones, yes, it is as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when addressing <coughs> the youth. Yeah. And uh, in the well-known hadith, which the scholars mentioned, ya ma'ashar al-shabab, all company of youth, man istata'a min kumul ba'ata faliyatazawaj, whom sort of from you is able, mm. keyword able, mm. and this is physically and financially, yeah. and like. It's, it's a general, uh, you know, having the capability of marriage, yeah. you and know. Just to add to that, subhanAllah, for mm. all those listening, maybe one could want to, but they're not able. Yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. not just man arada minkum. Yeah, you understand? Exactly. It's a different exactly. wording. Yeah. Whoever wants to, they marry. No. Man mm. It's very crucial, this wording, you know, uh, where he said, man istata'a minkum al ba'ata. Whom so is able and capable, then let, let them marry. Yeah. He said, here's the benefit. He said, this is the most effective in lowering your gaze, lowering the gaze, and the most effective in preserving the private parts. And just to add to that as well, all those listening, the shabab, you know, whether sisters or brothers, it's like, if you want to be able to do halal, and at the same time, of course, you know, one gets to a certain age when they have a sense of, you know, Attraction to the yeah. opposite gender. It's like, Thirteen happens, exactly. Yeah. Meaning, when you're able and you've reached that age and you're able, you know what's around you, responsible. We're going to get into that, but the hadith is so profound. Al basar. It's like it's going to be able to help you maintain your yeah. morals yeah. as a Muslim. Where well, you're not going to just be around, you know, as yeah. some unfortunately, yeah, yeah. especially even in the West, where everything is open. You know, in the West, Akhir, Wallah, you can, those that are married is difficult, let alone those that are not married. Subhanallah. So it's like, أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرْ وَأَحْسُنِ الْفَرْجِ It's like you're going to be able to safeguard yourself. Afwan, Akhir, carry on. So, and then, and then, whom serve is not able. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّمْ فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ بِجَعْ He said, whom serve is not able, and upon him, upon them is fasting. Upon them, and again, this is a very important word, in meaning it's like, it's, I can't say it's fard. For them, but it's like it, ha- it carries a very strong meaning. Instead of saying fali, instead of saying fali yasum, it's like let then let him fast. Like, Alayhi bil song has a very strong one, as one of my teachers pointed out. And uh, upon them, yeah, upon you know? them, like Alayhi, yeah. literally. It's yeah. like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "This is the solution." Yeah, the solution. Yes, fa'inna hu lahu wijah. Yes, for it is a uh, wijah uh, for him uh, castration, like what they do to animals when they don't <laughs> want them to wow. reproduce. You know. In a nutshell, yeah. it's a protection. Yes. Yeah, and, he, and you get a lot of this, a lot of that's the times from the Shabab, and yeah. you probably hear it as well in the yeah. communities and stuff. Akhi, would you advise me? You know, I'm struggling, I want to get married, but I can't. Would you advise me? And you tell them, you know, it's fast, but they don't see the importance. Well, some people they see, like, okay, yeah, maybe it's difficult for some, because one will say, okay, but when I fast, I can't, I can't, you know, 
motive. I can't, I'm not mobile. I'm not, I can't function. But it's like, if you want to be able to protect yourself mm-hmm. and you see that this, you can't get married straight away, whatever reason one may have, one or two reasons, but it's like, it's going to be a means of protection. And Allah, the fasting, in the beginning, it's going to be difficult. Just like Ramadan, the first couple of days, but then you get used to it. Yeah. And you're going to see yourself that you're able to maintain yourself yeah. and preserve yourself physically, mentally, you know, morally, everything. The, and another thing I would like to mention as well, Allah, Akhwani, we know, Akhwati, that the Prophet There's nothing the Prophet told us to do except that is for the best yeah. and it's for our better. Yeah, and he needs better with the gods. Yeah, and it's better for us. Physically, mentally, spiritually, yeah. everything, society, yeah. you know, just regards to society. It doesn't, it's not specifically for his time, yeah. you know, 1400 years ago. It's every single time. Everything the Prophet told us is good for us. And what's the proof? Some people, well, like, when you see it sometimes, you, you know, when there's a hadith, akhi, mm. and then you get, you read it, it doesn't hit you at times. Mm. But the more you know who the Prophet was, that he's a messenger. And Allah mentions in the Quran, He doesn't utter for him his desires, but rather it's a revelation being revealed upon him. So what he's going to tell us, or what he's told us, it's nothing but khair. Yeah. And that's something I just wanted to mention and highlight for those that are thinking about fasting is difficult for me. Yeah, of course it's difficult, yeah. but it's because it's good for you. Yeah. Medication, akhi, you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> some medication that, you know, is a yeah, must yeah. for you to take. Akhi, it's not, it doesn't yeah. taste yeah. nice, but it's good for you. Junk. Yeah. Having sweets and what have you, it tastes amazing, yeah. but it kills you. Poison. <laughs> it's a poison. <laughs> it gives you the belly, it gives you, you know. So, but at the end of the day, it's because it's not good for you. Yeah. So that's something I just wanted to just highlight. <laughs> akhi, akhi. So with regards to fasting, <clears throat> you know, ob- from, ob- from the, uh, the obvious perspective is obviously you are reducing the energy that you have mm-hmm. as a result of abstaining from food and drink. Yeah. Therefore, you're not going to have energy to fulfill your desire, wanna do you understand? You're just trying to just um, uh, withhold yourself from breaking the fast. You, your focus is diverted. Yeah, do, that's, do you understand? Yeah, that's a very good point. That's like a physical aspect, but from a mental aspect, it's also having self control yeah. of your desires, yeah. having self control from eating and drinking. As so, this is training yourself to have self control from other things. Allah that haram. Allah you understand? That's Allah, like, yeah. Subhanallah, the amount, the amount of the mental and spiritual benefit of fasting and the physical is is too much. It, it's unbelievable, but it's just we're just too lazy yeah. to do it. You understand? Actually, scientists nowadays are finding the virtues of it. Look at intimate fasting; it just came about. Yeah, yeah. Like all Salam told us yeah. for fourteen hundred years ago. Yeah, and they're saying even they're saying it's even better to not drink now. There's, that's that's also, there's a new yeah, yeah, study yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. I so don't even like, drink Because before they were saying you, you have a little drink Have a little coffee Now they say Don't even drink Just like starve your body And then um, Something happens to your body I think It, it eats up the the, the the bad souls get um, Consumed or something Of that nature I I Look at how sometimes There's illnesses That one may have And they tell them To go on a fasting diet Like literally That's what they call it Isn't it yeah. Like fast Don't you know Withstrain from food and drink But sometimes they say Water for a certain amount of time But it's like Our dean has already told us that so it's, it's we don't need to search like a, a lot of times you find like even this topic of marriage and other things the shabab and olders and youngsters whatever Muslims we look for things outside of a deen mm. like we go and search okay how can we get this resolved and the Quran the Sunnah is the solution yeah. Islam is there's nothing better than it of you know because Salam told us I've left for you two things you won't go astray as long as you hold on to them Kitab Allah wa Sunnati you know the, the, the Quran and the Sunnah no. But unfortunately, you know, we're in an age and hal state and situation where we think that the deen comes first, second, and we put everything else first. I think it's more the aspect of people thinking deen is prayer. You know, they think like they mm-hmm. look at it as a, a ritual. Mm-hmm. It's you pray, you fast, you give zakat, you go hajj. They don't see like they don't see it as something that they can embed within their daily life yeah. and. Like Im- improve their well-being, their daily well-being. Do you understand how they interact with people, how their health is? They don't see it as a lot of people can't link like religion to health. Do you understand? Yeah, physical yeah, health, yeah. obviously spiritual health is obvious, mm-hmm, yeah. but a physical they yeah. can't like link it. Like what? 
What are you talking about? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> but you're right. You're right. And, it's, and unfortunately, it's, it's the case. Yeah. But Islam teaches us so many things about, you know, physically. It's, it's holistic, isn't yeah. it? It's everything. It exactly. teaches how to sleep. It so. teaches how to use the toilet. Yeah. Allah. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, how to sleep, how to put on yeah. clothes, how, yeah. to, how to be with people, how to, subhanAllah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing there except that Islam Allah. has an answer for it. So <coughs> now, you've mentioned, Habibi, the benefits of yani, marriage. From the hadith mm. Okay now I want to mention some benefits Just that Because come to me now With regards to The benefits of society mm. Look at the society Okay okay let's, let's look at it From a perspective of Those that Don't get married Okay They have a partner Okay Let's just be real mm. Okay And there's, there's been a study Subhanallah I came across a couple of years ago That those that were married They had less issues Than those that had a partner For a long period of time And had children with a partner Akhi, Islam, alhamdulillah, gives you that sense of responsibility. Marriage is a responsibility. Commitment. Commitment, akhi. You know, it's a commitment. Many people are scared to step into that realm or that boat of commitment. It's like, I'm scared to embark on that ship. But it's like, if you're a Muslim and you're sincere and you want to get married for the sake of Allah, okay, where hadith that's authentic, it completes half your religion. That's literally, that's what marriage does now. If you're going to be at that stage now, mm, you know, I don't want to... Okay, now you're basically having a partner, okay, in haram, okay? Mm. And you're going to be with her, or she's going to be with you, she's, or she's going to be with you, whatever, vice versa, vice versa. And you're going to have probably have children and what have you. Then what? How many times do you see they are together for a certain period of time and they try to avoid having children, just see if it's going to work out, as they say. We're going to try out because I don't know the person. Yeah. And then after a long period of time, they have children. Now children are involved in the picture and then they get, they separate. So there's no commitment yeah. because neither the, neither one of the part, one of the two of the parties, they didn't want to commit. Islam, alhamdulillah, when you get married, before you even get married, you do your research, you do it Islamically according to the Sunnah, what have you. And even if there's disagreements, there's a certain way to go about where you're going to separate. But the point I'm mentioning here is that marriage, it sets that sense of stability and, you know, respect. And it creates that house where it should be built upon Islam. Yeah. You know, whereas if there's something where there's no commitment, no one's got married and what have you properly, Islamically, then it's going to be a thing where they can each do whatever they want because there's no sense of commitment. There's no morals. They don't have any sort of thing that's binding mm-hmm. them together, which it should be this, you know, Islam. So I think from that perspective as well, like it's so much beneficial things that can come about because when you're with someone, you don't really care about them because at the end of the day, you didn't commit to be with them. Inshallah, for as long as Allah enables you to be with them. And that's obviously in haram yeah. relationships, you know. So when there's a thing where it's marriage, then at least it's something that you're going to be together, Islamically, and there's foundations. And the main thing I'll end it on, Allah mentions in the Quran, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّهِ اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ And that should be the thing that separates the spouses, the husband and wife. If there's problems, they return it back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. Yeah, that ma- the Islamic marriage from other relationships now. Exactly, because you've got something where, okay, you know what, I've wronged you. You know, you say, Habibti, you know, my dear wife, whatever, I've wronged you. And then it's like, okay, you know what, I'm sorry. Because you know that, you know, that you're, you're trying to live according to the way yeah. the Prophet ﷺ was. And you're going to be judged for your actions. Exactly. So it's going back to your creed, isn't it, your aqidah? Exactly. Your uh, qiyamah. I think one more thing, Akhi, is the procedure of marriage in Islam. Before we go into that, before yeah. we go into that, I wanted to touch on the other benefits, Akhi, that you can mention about marriage. طيب, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? He said, تَزَوَّجُ الْوَلُودَ الْوَدُودَ نعم فَإِنِّي مُكَاثِرٌ بِكُمُ الْأُمَمْ He said, marry the fertile, affectionate woman. SubhanAllah. For, for I am, for I'm going to have, I'm going to compete with the other nations for having the most followers. So basically your intention should be to increase the number of worshippers that are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? So this is why the Prophet said Allah. to marry the one that's fertile and affectionate. And they go hand in hand because if someone's affectionate then there's going to be intimacy and there's going to be uh, offspring, offspring yeah. inshaAllah. Yeah. Naam. 
and um, this is why it's important because you could have a woman that's fertile but she's not affectionate and then you don't feel like being yeah, so it's obvious yeah, that you're yeah. not going to meet them then of course. there's not going to be offspring <laughs> of course, <laughs> the problem, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, so you need kind of both of these things um, and this is this is one of the benefits and just general benefits Akhi, like subhanallah it's not necessarily that it has to mention uh, as per in, explicitly in a text mm. like teaching the men responsibility yes. you find all of these um, like people a lot of like you've got two extremes in the society right you got those that marry too young they're not ready and they don't have money they're mm. broke and stuff and yeah. they're like 18 and they're practicing they want to marry mm. and then you got the other ones that are waiting till they're 40 and they have got 50k in their bank to marry <laughs> do you understand yeah, yeah. so the middle path is a middle path yeah. where you have some kind of stability but you're not you're not saving to have a backup, you know, just in case you have ten kids or something. Do you understand? Mm. Akhi, that's a very good point you mentioned, because Subhanallah. In terms of, I remember a hadith in Tirmidhi, and in paraphrasing according to what it means is that the Allah Azza wa Jal will provide for the one that what gets married for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Authentic hadith. I remember when I was getting married at the time, I read this and this was something that I it resonated to. Yeah. Like it was, I was able to look at it and think to myself, you know, there's no doubt. And you know the saying of the Hadith Sahaba, you know, if you want to get rizq, then what? Have mm. have uh, offsprings. I think I've heard something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I mean, there is, there is so many, many indications. At the end of the day, if you're doing something out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sincerity. Uh, sin- with sincerity yeah. then of course you're going to get that provision mm. but th- islam is like moderation it's not like you know it's not like the S- sufi vibes I, I don't care allah <laughs> provide i won't even get a job and i will just marry and everything will fall in place mm-hmm. that's not what this obviously these narrations yeah. of course, mean of course of course or these athar mean it just means that you know just make that first step have a job have some basic stability. Tire show, camera. yeah, show that you know you're you're a man that's working. That you're not just sitting in the mosque twelve hours a day. Mm. Do you understand? You're ready to go out there and have a job or build a business, your own business. You're doing something. You, you like you're not sleeping from Fajr to Dhuhr. You understand? And, you you and, and then go to a meeting and say, Uncle, come on, talk around Allah. Yeah, and say, <laughs> you know, I got a beard, Uncle. <laughs> you understand? Look at my beard. How long it is? It's not gonna work. So it's like it has that moderation because if you look now, yeah, at 21, 22, mm. a person should be, you know, if a person does the whole school system, like 22, you're a graduate, 23, yeah. you got a job, you're making some money. Mm. That's it, khalas. Mm. Not 30, 23. Mm. Mm. If even before, there's not necessary to even wait 23. Yeah, but you just give an example. Yeah, an yeah. example. Mm. Easily, if a person put their head down, 20, 22, they could be married and be bringing in about 2,000 2, a month quite easily. Yeah, yeah. And that's enough for two people. Yeah. And then, inshallah, things will prosper and flourish. Sure. Do you understand? Because you will get promoted or you will get some kind of other, uh, or, 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 you know, or even, uh, you know, you could do a side business and the like. Do you understand? But you will motivate. You will be like... You will become responsible as a man, like, okay, um, you're going to have a wife, you, inshallah, maybe your wife becomes pregnant, it's like, okay, I need to have this much money. You're going to start managing your because finances. Because you've committed. Yeah, because you've committed. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I was going back to, because about commitment and, you know, the Islamic marriage is you can't just go and marry someone because you have to go for the wali, you have to go for the dad. Mm-hmm. And then dads are the most, you, you understand, generally speaking, obviously there are exceptions. Mm. They're the, they are the one person that's gonna have the that, that's gonna be most protective over their daughters. Course, do you understand? And they're gonna be most cautious. Like you're gonna have to go through war to <laughs> you understand? Yeah. To to, to do you understand to to get that dad's acceptance. Yeah. And but the, that's, and that's that, only fair. And he's a man. Yeah. He understands men. Yeah. And he that's knows only how fair men. As well. Yeah, of course. And he and he knows how men think. Mm-hmm. So he knows if this guy's serious is not, and what he's put in place, etc. Like all the smooth talking and one line is not going to work on the dad. It's, it might work on a girl on the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. not going to work on it. He's going to look at you blank in the face. What should, what do you do for a living? Yeah, well, it's true. It's true. You can't sweet talk a dad. It's true. <laughs> no, no, hundred percent. Actually, well, is such an look at that protection. Yeah. Look at that protection. Actually, <laughs> and well, is such an important topic. Actually, <laughs> and. Um, like when you compare, subhanAllah, living in this country, when you compare, like if you be in schools and stuff, you see, like, and we've seen like 13 year old girls, like they, they, as long as they are with someone of their age, it's okay. And this, this guy, he, he can't even, he doesn't even have five pounds in his bank. Achi, you know what they do? I remember back yeah. in the days, Achi, they're like, they have like the sweet talk 
or they say, you know, she's beautiful, they are oh, you look so beautiful, and then they'll compliment her, bust a line, you know, you know, drop that bar or whatever you want to call it, or a line of, you know, romance, you know, yeah. just to kind of show she her. Chat up line there. Yeah, exactly. Like, just to show her like I'm interested in you. Mm-hmm. Obviously, and that's another thing as well, as from the nature, the way Allah has created uh, a woman, is that, you know, they seek attention. They like attention. They see, I mean, that's, that's natural. That's true, yeah. Do you get They're it? wonderful, beautiful. Exactly, they're wonderful, beautiful. But that's another message as well that I give to the fathers. Akhi. Wallahi, it is something that I think is very important. When you are raising your daughter young, and she's in your household, so you're the wali, you're the you know, protector and the guardian, always remind your daughters of how beautiful they are. And always tell them they're beautiful. Remind them because subconsciously, generally speaking, they always put themselves down, and they're always in competition. It's shaitan, isn't it? Shaitan's always gonna say you're ugly, you're of ugly, course, you're course. ugly, and, and it's gonna try to make them feel insecure. And the fact that if they're covering, Akhi is double trouble. Exactly. You understand? It's like, oh, look at her beautiful hair. Nobody knows that beautiful hair that's under the hijab. Nobody knows that beautiful this and that that's under the hijab. Look at her. Look at that amount of attention she's getting. Nobody likes you. You're ugly. You're this. You're that. And then slowly, what happens? She tries. Uh, yeah, unveil, try, oh, okay, I am beautiful. Makeup. And then she might be in too deep and then it's too hard to get out there. Exactly. And why I was mentioning it, because exactly what you said, may Allah bless you, Habibi, is that when you constantly remind them they're beautiful the way they are in hijab and whatever, as they're growing up, before and after hijab and during it, is that they won't go and try and seek attention outside from what? Mm. From other men. Why? Because you as a father I remind them they're beautiful. And inshallah, obviously, you're going to bring them up on deen and stuff. But now, let's say you get those fathers. They're never home. They never, you know, tell their, 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 their daughters how beautiful they are. Never remind them of anything. So, of course, now going to school, public school, 20, they're there for like eight hours a day, nine hours a day. They're going to seek attention they're, from they're outside. They're literally brought up by the school. Exactly. They're going to be seeking their attention from <coughs> other boys in school. And that's something that's very, 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 very dangerous. Yeah, this happens from like the age of 13. So you can imagine that in, initially she, uh, the girl's very naive and she's very shy. Yeah. And that's how, that's her fitra, right? Of course. But how long do you expect her to hold it, hold out for? Yeah. Do you understand? Every day she's facing this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day. Mm. Do you understand? 13, maybe 14, maybe 15. Eventually it's going to come to a point. She's like, you know what? Forget this. Do you understand? Mm. I want to know that someone likes me. I want to know that someone loves me. Mm. And then. This guy, you know, he buys a, you know, a rose from the pound store and then it gives on Valentine's Day. I remember like in schools, so, you know, they used to give like these roses, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably like a quid or whatever. Of course. And like a little chocolate or whatever. Yeah. And then she thinks she's in love. He's, yeah. He loves her. Yeah, yeah. And then she thinks she's in love. Do you understand? And it's not just that, just to add to that, uh, you know, back in the days, I remember when Sam's used to just kind of was up and running two for two. Probably, should, probably he'll take her. Yeah. Okay, I'm being serious, it's raw. Yeah, and he, you're now thinking you're loved. He's taking you to Sam's in a ghetto area and he's buying you two for two burgers and he's saying we're going halves on this. <laughs> My sister in Islam, do you really think this man values you or loves you? He's buying you Sam's. Okay, which and cost then, two pound, I remember. And then it went up to two fifty. Okay, and then the drinks, and they're gonna buy you a little Pepsi or whatever. And then he's gonna be like, we've, we've, you know, this is the first date, and you know how, you know, he's showing you now that he loves you by taking you to Sam's and buying you two pound. And that's basically every other week he'll do that. And you think you're loved. You think yeah, this is my pretend, my future husband. He doesn't love you. He doesn't. He doesn't have no respect for you. But he doesn't know. He's naive himself, though, to be honest. Do you get it? Of course. He, but... he has a desire he wants to fulfill. And he's going to do everything in his power to get there. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So that's what it is. And I think that's just his way of... It's a natural way. It's like... Um, I don't, I don't know if natural way is the right word. But it's like... It's kind of instinctive. Do you get it? He wants to fulfill. He has an urge. He wants to fulfill. Mm. And he's found someone that's falling for his trap. Mm. Do you understand? So that security is, oh, you're beautiful. I love you. I'll never leave you. You know, we'll have kids together. We'll grow old together. He's given her every kind of security that she needs. But he's not, he's, there's nothing's materialized. There's nothing there. He's got like five pounds in his bank account. Really? Man, if, if that, Something is materialized. What? Slams, two for two. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the only thing. Which his dad gave him the money to buy, right? Probably, because it doesn't work. Exactly. Do you understand? Or his mum. And this is obviously how the non-Muslims bring up their children. Yeah. And the Muslims are copying this. Exactly. Uh, are following this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that point you made, Allah, is so true because we need to now educate ourselves 
as a community, how should one go about, okay, mm. actually getting married? We mentioned the benefits and Zakhla Khair, you mentioned that this is from the means or the ways that occurs in high school. But one thing I want to say to the sisters is that, Wallahi, you should honor yourself. You know, have that self pride that don't degrade yourself to that stage where you're going to give up your deen or get into haram relationships for some guy that's taking you to Sam's. Yani, come on, okay, or buying you fake jewelry. Okay, online on eBay or, or any other means of him trying, like you said, it's a trap, isn't it? Yeah. It's like have that self respect and dignity and honor yourself as a Muslim. You know, the most, yeah, any Islam, and once again, Islam, alhamdulillah, has, you know, given the woman status, high status that no other religion has. And it's like nowadays, unfortunately, we're forgetting that as Muslim and yani as as Muslim and specifically the sisters, it's like you're degrading yourself to that to go that low, thinking he loves you. He doesn't love you. You don't know what love is, and he doesn't know what love yeah, is at that young age. Lust at all. It's just lust. But, but but at the same, I think it's even like Subhanallah. This is why you know there's that saying, isn't it? It's the intelligent one is the one that learns from other people's mistakes. So if you look at like the non-Muslims, right? They call it love. They're probably young love. Puppy love, whatever mm. love, yeah. 34. My first one. How many of these last? Look at their relationship. How many, like, look at them when they're 20s and 30s, when they're married or whatever, yeah. How many of them is with their first boyfriend? Mm. I can't, I can, probably 100%, zero. 100%, 100%. Probably zero. 100%. 100%. Rarely, maybe like one in a million or, mm. or 10,000. Do you understand? So it's like, as you said, it's a protection that before this guy even touches me, he better sh- go to my dad and convince him that he's going to commit and he's better, he better make it public and let the people know that he's going to take care of me and he's going to have a house. Now, it's not necessarily he has to be rich. It's just that commitment, right? Like, it's the fact that, okay, um, you know, even if he's renting a house, he doesn't have to buy a house, but he's got he's got a job, he's working. Do you understand? And he's made it, he's made it known to the people that this is my wife. I am, you know... My intention is to be with this woman for the rest of my life and I'm going to have children. Mm. This is why the non-Muslims, you know, they're so scared about their girlfriends getting pregnant. Yeah. Because there's no commitment. Exactly. That's the last thing they want. Exactly. They run. Exactly. If they hear like, it's like, oh, you're going to have an abortion. No. And boom. It's like. Disappeared. Vanish. Akhi. And now she's having to raise that child yeah. by herself. Yeah. Because so that shows, that is, that is one of the, you know, obviously, um, it's, it's a big factor in determining if someone's serious, that they would have children with you. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. The fact that he'll got children, is not necessarily, obviously some people, they don't care, they'll have children and with a thousand women, it doesn't bother them. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of the cases, men won't have children with women unless they want to they, commit. They, they want to commit. Yeah. Do you yeah. understand? Mm. Well, I'm mm. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because it's like, like you said, a rajul ya'rif a rajul. Yani, what you said earlier and what you said mm. now is, if he really values you, and respects you, he'll go to your father or your wali, your male mahram. But most cases you'll find that they wouldn't because mm. they don't actually really value that specific sister. And of course, a man will be able to see through another man or a young boy with regards to him coming with those sweet lines and, mm. you know, sweet boy. Silver tongue, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah exactly. You know, or him, what, what has kind of drawn you into liking him? Yeah, because the dad's going to be like, why do you want to marry my daughter? Uh, what's he going to say? He's going to be stuck. Understand? If he's, he's not serious, he's going to be stuck. Yeah, it's going to be like, he's, he's not going to like say the thing that he would say to the girl. Exactly. Do exactly. you understand? Exactly. He's going to be too scared, taken yeah. back. Yeah. And so. that's another thing as well that I always told us, you know, this is why, you know, anyway, there's different khilafat, but that which is authentic, <coughs> like there's no nikah that's actually authentic and accept, accepted except by yeah. the wali. A, a, a marriage is not valid without a wali. The guardian, which, Male. In ori- uh, the, which is origin is the dad. Origin is the dad. Exactly. He has the Muslim dad and two witnesses. And two witnesses. So this is like... You, uh, it's this, a protection, yeah, actually. Well, yeah. life for the sisters is protection for the sisters. No, Because like, I mean, as, as a man, you don't really need permission. Okay? Yeah. If you want to get married. But it's a protection. Yeah. Sure, yeah. It's a protection, subhanAllah. But it's like... It's something that sisters now, like once again you're saying, they don't see it holistic. They don't see that Islam can benefit them, or is a benefit with regards to their livelihood and their day-to-day life. It's just like, okay, yeah, I need to go to Hajj, I need to do Umrah, I need to pay Zakat, I need to pray, okay, let me find and read a book. 
you know mm. but then it's like marriage okay what are you going to do then yeah. that's also it's fantastic and then yeah and so the marriage they just copy the non-muslim they have like a, a white wedding or whatever you know music and free mixing and wastage okay, so much wastage so they're putting this unnecessary burden on the man on the group mm. to get like limos and whatever else mm-hmm. and he gets himself in debt so he's going to have a kind of resentment mm. they don't realize okay this is the man you're going to live with and you're already st- starting off with giving him reason to resent you mm-hmm. yeah, do you understand mm-hmm. so if you get upset or if you get angry if you do something he doesn't like he's going to be quicker to get upset with you because of what he went through he's like mm-hmm. i worked hard and i've made all this and i put myself all, through all this debt mm-hmm. and this is how you treat me do you get it yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas if he was more merciful obviously not not make yourself like cheap or anything mm-hmm. but if you was to make it uh, in a, a moderate wedding mm-hmm. Then he's not going to have that. It's going to be like, you know, she made things easy for me. Their family made things easy for me. And they accepted what I had. You know, they accepted my work, my hard work. And it wasn't necessarily that I had to be rich. So I would respect her. Yeah. It would be easier yeah, to respect. Yeah. Do you understand? No, 100%. 100%. I mean, okay, so what I wanted to delve into specifically is how does one get married? Okay. Islamically. How is it done? And it's a big taboo because a lot of those that even want to start practicing or those that are practicing, some of them, there's two types. Those that don't understand how to do it at all, but they want to learn. They don't know where to go to Mm. find out. And then those that see it as it's not really practical. And they say the statement of, how am I going to know him? Sisters, Mm. they will say, like, I can't just have three, four, five, ten meetings and know this person. He's a stranger. Brothers will be like, okay, but I can't really suss her out. I don't know if she's the right one. You know, mm. I'd rather just go out with her to a cafe, cinemas, you know, go out on what they call dates. They call it, no, I'm, you know, I'm going out, you know, and I'm going, I'm basically, she's, I'm engaged to her. <laughs> Once again, it's the teachings of numbers and it's like, okay, I want to get to know them. So my question is to you, Habibi, what do you advise a young sister? She wants to get married. She's seen someone that maybe has a liking to her or maybe she has a liking towards him. How does she go about it? What does she do as a sister? Forget the brother now, just sister. Um, I would say in the most, you know, expressing, I would say that the only thing she can do is maybe speak to, preferably speak to his sister if he has a sister. Okay, okay, sense, okay, approach okay. So okay. avoid direct contact. Mm. Because that, the thing is what you're saying, uh, what you said of, you know, the people being engaged and just basically doing what girlfriend boyfriends mm, do mm-hmm. is very dangerous. This is why Allah is protected. Because once, because what did the Prophet he said, like, you know, your eyes commit zina, your ears commit zina, and your hands commit zina, your feet commit zina. And either the private part, I think it's like accepts it or rejects it. Because it gets to a point where desires can intensify so much, it's beyond your control. And that's because you didn't take the means to protect yourself. So you're in, in close proximity with this person and you're speaking to them. And let's say you like them. Mm. Let's say you do like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tayyib, and you're looking at each other and you're looking at, you know, you're staring and you're talking and mm. you're trying to impress each other. Yeah, yeah. It's going to get to a point where it's unbearable that you're going to end up touching them. You're going to end up doing more things. Mm, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Because it's beyond, it becomes beyond your control because yeah. that's natural. That's how Allah has made us. Yeah. So it's a protection again. Yeah. Again, it's a protection. Yeah. And that's why it's like, okay, this is the other option. So which is the lesser evil? The lesser evil is you take the risk. Either way, there's a risk. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. With a boyfriend, girlfriend, there's a risk, but that risk is bigger. Look at what happens to them. Yeah. Do you understand? That woman... Wrong. Actually, the, the guy does everything what a man does with a wife. Yeah, yeah. And he can leave her just like that. Subhanallah. So on the other side, okay, there's a risk. But, you you know, you, you kind of sussed him out. You can tell, you know, you've asked people regarding him. So reference, references, you know, uh, his local... So message, is that what he should... Is that that's what the only she, thing she so, can do, yeah. So after she's spoken to her sister, let's say, and, you know, she's happy. Yeah. What next? Is like you said to, to now research about him. Yeah. When, when does she tell references. her male mahram? Or her father. When when does that happen? Um, yeah, she. I, I'm I th- talking about it. Speak about it. When I when I ask you this question, Akhi, I want you to give as if you're giving your daughter this advice. You know, as if you're giving someone that you know you've got a daughter and she's ready. Would you advise her? And it's like maybe see it as if it's a risala you're giving to your daughter. How should she go about it? Um, I would I would say like 
I would say, okay, again, as you mentioned, we return back to religion. Yeah. And we find like in a hadith mm. where a woman even came and presented herself to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, JazakAllah khair. Yeah. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't want to marry her, a different companion uh, married him. Yeah. So her, yeah. again, ma- yeah, ma- the, he done the nikah. Mm. So the point being, if a woman likes a man, yeah. And you know she's sure of it, or you know she has this attraction. She has seen some things, whatever. You know, you know. Unfortunately, we, we live in a society where there's a lot of free mixing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not encouraging that, but it's happening. So, what do you do in this situation to protect yourself? You should marry. So, if you end up in this kind, these kind of environments, and you see someone that you want to marry, then and and you've seen good qualities from them, then you speak to the father. Now the father, um, what's expected of the father is to be understanding, not to become angry, not to become upset. Because there's ghulu and ghira as well, akhi. Mm-hmm. You know ghira mm-hmm. is a oh, protective jealousy. A man has this for his sisters. Uh, a, a man that has good fitra, you understand? With sound fitra, sound, you know, natural inclination, he would have this, like this. He would get angry seeing his sister with a random yeah. Do you understand? Of course, of course. Man, of course. This is a natural feeling mm. that a man has. Mm. Right? And the father has this for his daughter. Yeah. So, what the father has to do is not become upset and not become overworked. Okay. And realize that this is a good thing. Your daughter has come to you in trust. Exactly. She's trusting you to make a decision to help her with this affair. Okay. Secondly, your intention should be. The happiness of your daughter, mm. right? Mm. As a, like yeah, for her yeah. to marry is her happiness, not your own happiness. Exactly. Not to build your own ego or, or your self-esteem or your reputation. Mm-hmm. This is about your daughter being happy. Yeah. And the key to happiness is what, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ida jaakum man tarzanu dinahu wa khuluqahu fazawujuhu." Okay. If there comes a person whose religion and his etiquettes pleases you, then marry him off. Meaning, marry him off to whoever you're in charge of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you don't do that, Oof. there will be calamities on the earth and great corruption, a widespread corruption. Wow. Do you understand? So yeah. this is a prophecy that happens. So when a person, when the father comes, uh, when the person comes, he needs to bear this hadith. Okay, the, the daughters come, now let me vet this guy. Let me ask for references. Mm-hmm. How is his manners? Is he short-tempered? Is he responsible? Is he friendly? The, um, you know, does does he um, does he? That's that's with regards to etiquettes. Now, with regards to religion, is does he pray? Does he fast? Mm. You know, um, what's what? What kind of career does he want to go into? Yeah. What's it, what are his future plans? Yeah. All of these things. Yeah, yeah. So he vets him, and and then if things are good. Then obviously he, was, he would speak to possibly speak to that uh, that the young man's family, yeah. and uh, they, would, they would facilitate the nikah. That's what they should do. Akhi, Allah jazakallah khair. Is that simple? Like it's not that complicated. Like people think it is complicated. Yeah, yeah no, no, Akhi, Allah, you're right. People think it's complicated, and I mean that's advice for the um, for the sisters. Mm. Now, before I, I'm going to touch on the advice on the brothers, what would you advise the revert sisters, Akhi? Because that's, that's a whole different topic, a whole different dynamics. And it's much more of a sensitive topic because of the corruption that has, yeah. you know, and it's still unfortunately happening, Akhi. What, um, what I think you have observed, you know, that's widespread is there are young brothers that are not ready to marry. Mm, yeah. Obviously, they want to protect themselves from haram. So they marry reverts. And then they don't, they, they're not ready to... They, they, maybe they didn't, they didn't know what to expect of marriage because yeah. they have never been married. They probably just have this short-term relationship prior to that. Yeah, yeah. So when they marry, they don't know how to deal with the responsibilities of marriage or the differences in uh, the, the personalities of a man and a woman, etc. And can I just add before you carry on, I just want to mention just one quick small thing. Relationships that you may have had, brother or sister, mm. haram relationships, 
you can never compare them to marriage. Yeah. I just wanted to add that. Because yeah. I think that's so crucial. And that's the thing, isn't it? Because sh- shaitan will always beautify the haram. Mm. Do you understand? So this way you say, oh, you know, you might hear people say, when I was a kafir, my boyfriend treated me better. Mm. When I was, you know, understand? Mm. When I was non-Muslim, my girlfriend treated me better. Do you understand? Mm. Because at the end of the day, Shaitan's loving this. He's not gonna. He doesn't have to fight you. He's like, please carry on. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. You're you're earning the anger of Allah. Why am I gonna stop you? I'm gonna make this so beautiful for you. Yeah, yeah. But this, I'm gonna try to make you guys hate each other. I want to try to divide you. As per hadith, you know the hadith. Uh, was the hadith in Sahih Muslim? Is the Iblis? He sits on his throne. Yeah, he sits on his throne, and the one that comes back, yeah. who has caused and said that I have caused farraqt bain al mar'i wa zawji. Yeah, I have caused the, the you know friction and separation, divorce between the man and his wife, and then Shaitan would basically. Yeah, I think uh, it's yeah, I think it's Iblis. He, Iblis, he would, yeah. And that that sh- that one, the Shaitan that caused the division between the husband and wife, with the closest. Yeah, and he'll be but, elevated, obviously. Yeah, I think it brings him closer. Yeah, that word, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Subhanallah. So, That's showing you that yeah. what, one of the best things, beloved to Iblis, is that specific thing, which is obviously yeah. not easy to do. Because a lot of the time, what happens like after divorce? Children become messed up. Of broken homes. Broken homes. People go off the deen. People become weak. Sisters become weak. Brothers become weak. They don't know how to deal with heartbreak. Do you understand? Wow. Yeah. Um, so, anyhow, so going back to that point with the yeah. sisters being reversed. So, obviously, they would have a guardian. Usually, the guardian, their, dad, their father cannot be the guardian because mm. he's careful, right? Mm. But it doesn't mean he can't be involved. Do you understand? It doesn't mean your brother can't be involved. It, you understand? Because at the end of the day, and that's the, that's the form of that one. You're going to tell me, Dad, you better vet this guy for me. Because mm. there are things, Kafir, Muslim, Black, White, Asian, this, every man understands. Of course. As a man, every yeah. man understands as a man. The build up of a man and the thought process of a man. Mm. Everyone understands it. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't change because you've got a beard. Of course. Do you understand? Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> so that's why they should include. They're male relatives. Mm. You understand? And if they can't, they can't at the end of oh, the why day. Oh, why though? Why? Tell me why. Because men respect men. Mm. You understand? Men respect authority. Mm. Like when a woman is there, she's weak. What mm. can she do? Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. What can she do to defend herself? What can she do to even find out the details of what this man's intentions are? Yeah. And, and, and a lot of the time, women are easily, easily manipulated. Yeah. Man, manipulated, yeah, that's the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that you can easily tell them things, and like I said, you know, like just like you know, the teenagers, what they do, they tell them, you know, I can do that, I can do that, yeah. Oh, yeah. And nothing's materialized, nothing's present. He's not got nothing. Yeah. He's probably not got a job. Yeah. But he just looks the part. He's got the beard. Yeah. He's got the thobe. Mm. You, you understand? He's yeah. got the atar. Yeah. He's got the kufi. He's got the full. He's shabang. got the kufi. He's yeah. got the kuwaiti thobe, with the you know with the <laughs> yeah, yeah, fold. Yeah. 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 So he looks good. He looks the part. But it's like, Achi, what do you do for a living? Yeah. You're a handsome man, yeah. but what do you do for a living? Yeah, well, do you understand? So, so. Is that enough? Just you being handsome? Yeah, inshallah, he'll get a job. Or oh, inshallah, I will help him. This is your life. You don't help people like this in life. If you want to help him, give him some money and tell him to go. Yeah, yeah, do you understand? Yeah, give him a tenner. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't know what you're right. It's so true. He's a druggie. I'll help him. He's a, you understand? Mm. He, he's dealing with all kinds of... Mental problems. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't pray. Inshallah, I'll help him pray. Yeah, Akhi, yeah. What are you doing? Ukhti, what are you doing? Like, Akhi, you're gonna have children with this guy? <laughs> he pulls it there, man. Let me take her out. Assalamualaikum. So, yeah, Akhi, so the fact that <clears throat> he may look the part, yeah. he's got the nice beard, the quaity thobe, yeah. above the ankles, yeah. You know, uh, you know, and he's handsome, whatever. You, you understand? And yeah. he speaks the right tone, and he's got he's got the sweet voice. The, the, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's he's got the lines. You know, you understand? Yeah, he knows but what he's he, doing. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Mm. It's the same game mm-hmm. that he was playing at thirteen. But, but he, like you, you said, understand? Just, but like you said, it's like it doesn't matter about the. Yeah, but know. it's almost instinctive. It's like I want to get this. I want to get it with the least amount of hardship possible. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? And that's how, unfortunately, the society has, you know, raised yeah. young men yeah. to not thinking about. And a lot of them, you, you know, if you speak to one of them, like, what did you get yourself into? 
Mm. At the time when they're doing it, they're not thinking, okay, what's the consequence that's mm. going to follow of me, you know, basically impregnating this, this, this young yeah, lady? Having children. Having yeah. children. They're not thinking, they don't want to deal with it. Maybe even not taking care of the children, even after divorce. Of course. They, yeah. As soon as they find out, they straight away, as you find many cases, like you mentioned earlier, they'll convince them to what? They'll convince that partner or whatever to abort the baby. Yeah, that's abortion. yeah outside the marriage. Yeah. Outside like, the, yeah. The, 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 yeah. Exactly. I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So now let's say talk, talk about like Muslim young men. They won't think about that responsibility afterwards because for them it's like okay if this doesn't work, I move over to the next mm. um, to the next uh, available to what's available on yeah. the table and it's like it's not a milkshake it's not yeah. a, a you know a set of you know buffet where you're choosing and selecting what you I want this is someone else's daughter, someone else's uh, niece, yeah, someone else's slave of sister. Allah. It's a servant yeah. of Allah, it's your sister in Islam. And just like you mentioned hadith, would you like that, what you're doing, you know, going around and going to, you know, it's, you know, well, someone marries sister. your sister and divorce after two exactly. years, actually, because, you know, he can't, you know, he can't take the fact that she's a bit more, you know, she's nagging at certain times of the month or whatever. Do you understand? Like, then you wasn't ready for marriage, was you? Then you were just, you was never serious. Do you understand? That's why there's maharachi as well. That you better pay up some money up front. And let me see that you got a house rented out and whatever else. You understand? Well, it's difficult. But man. I like how with the Revert sisters, mm. you know, obviously then they should get their male relatives involved. They should get the more people that are involved, the more. Do you understand? A person that's trying to be sly. They're not gonna. They're, they're, they're gonna, gonna think run. Twice. They're gonna. Twice, yeah. More side gonna run. Exactly. Or we'll run. Yeah. So obviously, do the common sense thing. Make sure the person practicing. Yes, he should look the part. He should look the part. Okay, but that's not it. Okay, is he responsible? What does he do for a living, etc. Okay, don't don't try help brothers that have drug problem. Don't try help pro- help brothers that's come out of jail and they're trying to start up their dean and you know. They just, you know, they just look handsome, but you know, they, yeah. they have nothing going on. It's true, and uh, it's stop trying to help people and trying to have kids with people <laughs> that, that need help. Give but them you, money. But you know what you said, Subhanallah. Like you said, Wallah, and that's something I think the, the Arab saying they say, a zawj ala din zawjiha. Mm. Yeah, a woman, a, a, a wife is going to be upon the religion of her husband. In the household, the but, man is going to be the one that's going to be, you know, like you said, if he's a druggie, came out, he's got history, whatever, and you think you're going to be good enough to no. At the end of the day, he is the one. He's the dominant. Yeah. He's dominant, exactly. And that's how generally Allah, you know, that's how it is. Whether they accept, we accept it or not, but that's how it is. That's reality. Yeah. I mean, the vice versa is not so much bad. Like, if a brother wanted to help a sister, right? He's mm. the dominant one. Mm. And he can actually, you know, if he exercises authority in the correct manner, he can actually really help her, mm. a woman. Mm. But not the other way around. Mm. Do you understand? She's the one that gets pregnant. She's the one that becomes vulnerable. So it's different. Do you get it? Whereas the man has the, uh, you know, the, the, the dominant um, uh, is saying in a, in a relationship, he's going to, there's going to be, a, even that, you know, it shouldn't be a, a risk that the man takes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? A, a woman is married for four. You understand? He said, marry the woman that has a religion. You understand? And you will be successful. Do you understand? And just to add to that, Allah, for the sisters, Zakhullah Khair, what you said, if you do do all of what the brother has said, Zakhullah Khair, get your family involved, whether they're not, even if they're not Muslim, yeah. but you've got your male relatives there, then at least, if anything does occur, they'll be able to back you and defend you. Why? Because you got them involved in the beginning. Yeah. How many times do you hear stories? Sister, she started practicing, she thought and she was told a wali has to be Muslim, which is correct, okay, yeah. yeah. But then she thought she understood wrongly mm. and she was ignorant and people around her were also ignorant. They said, don't get them involved. Yeah. So she didn't get her family involved from get-go. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Got married three weeks to a year or whatever. After a period of time, they got divorced and he and she was treated like trash. And the crazy thing, she can't go back to and no, her no, dad. No. And then now she wants to go back to her dad and call her father. This is what happened to me. This is start crying off on the phone. What's the father going to say? You didn't want me involved in the beginning. I wanted to be involved. I, I didn't know. What's, what's, I didn't what? know. Maybe. When did you get married? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Okay, and let's just say they do know. They're going to feel like as if you didn't accept them because they're not Muslim. So therefore, you've now degraded the position of your father. He's your father whether you're Muslim, whether he's Muslim or not yes, Muslim. He, that authority has not going to come off him yeah, yeah. because of the fact that you entered Islam. Islam, Allah is a deen of mercy. But we fall into these things and we do these silly mistakes that eventually we end up suffering the consequences because of ignorance. Allah, that's why ilm is so, knowledge is important and crucial. 
Let's say now I'm a father and I'm a father now. I've got daughters, alhamdulillah. If I was in the same situation as let's say that non-Muslim father that, that has a daughter that became Muslim, I would feel this, I would feel disrespected. My daughter is going to get married, which is a big thing for me. I, sh- I, I should take pride towards the fact that yeah. my daughter is being married. You take ownership. Own- it's ownership. Like, yeah. and it's an honor for me as well to yeah. be there. You are giving her I'm giving Exactly. Yeah. Now, I'm not involved. And then I tried to be in the beginning. I wasn't. And I was told, ah, oh, because I'm not a Muslim. SubhanAllah. I'm going to now, already you're not giving me that. You're pushing me yeah, further yeah, yeah. away from, like, from what kind of religion is this, What kind of religion that I can't be involved in yeah. such a happy, ha- joyful moment. And then what yeah. happens? Problems occur. I get a phone call. Daddy, this happened to me. Da, 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 da. I'm going to feel bad. I want to help out. But at the same and time, like, Whoa, you need to yeah, learn a lesson. Yeah, you didn't want me involved in the yeah, beginning. Sort yeah. yourself out. Yeah. I shut the door on you. Yeah, now, Ukhti fil Islam. My sister in Islam. These are the things that the brother, Jazallah Khair, is mentioning that don't put yourself in that predicament yeah, where you're going to gonna be vulnerable and no one's going to fend for you like your family. Let's be honest, yeah, yeah. Who's going to fend for you like your family? Be honest. Mm. Whether they're Muslim or not yeah, Muslim. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, that's your family. They're the ones that changed your nappies and that's fended so for you yeah. and gave you clo- they clothed you after the father of Allah. And they, they literally sacrificed everything. Your parents. At the end of the day, your parents are your parents. Be good and dutiful and kind to, towards them in the dunya. Mm. Even if they're not Muslim. Yeah, if they strive to make you commit shirk with me, don't obey them. Exactly. Don't, don't obey them. But... Oh, Accompany them with goodness in, in the in Yeah. So Allah that's that, that that's the reason why I asked you about the reverse actually. You know what it is though? Uh, There's another issue with the reverse though. What, what's the issue? Some of them come from broken homes, the fathers don't care. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. So in these kind of situations, right? <clears throat> but do they have brothers? Yeah. So uncles. And even if even that like, they should try to rectify the relationship with their male relatives, even yeah. if they're not Muslim, yeah, you know yeah, that. Yeah. And recognize that, okay, the imam is your wali. Generally, it's an imam that's a wali. Yeah. But he, he's not going to take that responsibility like the way a father would. A loving father would, I should say. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. But in the case of where, um, in the case of where, you know, the father doesn't care, that's a rare case, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't think it's common. But if it is, if it does exist, yeah. then they should get reliable brothers involved. Mm. So it should be a sister that you know, who has a husband uh, that you know that's been married to his sister for ten years and is a solid guy? Do you understand? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That should be the wali. This, do you understand? Mm-hmm. The person should oh, be someone meaning, in terms of yeah, he should be your guardian. Not, okay. I, I don't know if he. They say generally it's an imam, but he should. You should. You should have someone really trustworthy. Well, it could be someone that's righteous. married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's righteous. Yeah. That's known for you know upholding the marriage for maybe 10, 15 years. He should be the guy that's gonna be doing this. So, so can we get your number for the sisters? That one again? No, okay. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> joking. <laughs> no. I think no. it's you, okay. No, not Allah even. Mubarak. Not even, okay. But well, like what you said is so true because it's like you know now that this person that's close with your friend, who's basically her, her it's, it's, it's he's the husband of your friend, and he's obviously established himself and he's known in the community or whatever. He will be there if you get into that predicament where... Yeah, yeah. but so. I think more importantly, prior to that, he's going to be like... Very oh, meaning to vet out. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's my you. point. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be like, mm, who's this guy? You know, and then he's, he's going to be asking the people like, oh, Akhi, what message do you pray? And you should go to the masjid and ask the people, Akhi, you know, I'm trying to... I'm basically a guardian for a sister. Mm. And I want to know about this brother. How long do you know him? Does he pray here often? Mm. What have you seen from this praiseworthy? Have you seen anything that I should be worried about? Mm-hmm. Um, Etc. Mm. So, you know, that they should look, they should really, because it may be hard for them to find husbands, right? but they must have a sister circle who have husbands. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. That have that experience. Yeah. That have that, uh, that taqwa, mm. the fear of Allah, and recognize that this is a very serious issue. Uh, this this woman, you know, she could end up maybe leaving the deen or becoming weak if if she gets played around. She she might start thinking. You understand? Shaitan can really use it as a tool to make her weak. And how many of them? Akhi, have? And yeah, you hear stuff like that, like they become weak or left the deen, and then there's like a, a brother behind it that's that's married them and treated them like trash, literally, literally like trash, not taking any responsibilities, had children. And you understand, and they, they, they must be thinking like, well, this guy had a beard, he was praying, he had a thobe, 
Like, where did I go wrong? But they're naive. Do you understand? They just look at the appearance. Yeah. They just and it's saw, not all about appearance. Well, yeah. Like. They're just like, oh, you know, he smelled really nice. <laughs> Do you understand? It's like, uh, I love the actor. Uh, yeah. Oh, he's like, come on. Like, uh, like, no offense, but there's a stage. They, it, women are very emotionally um, engaged. Do you understand? They engage with their emotions. So if they like some, they like it. They don't think left, right. They don't. They don't necessarily think like in a practical uh, manner. Mm. Do you understand? Like practically, how useful is this guy in my life? How is this guy going to benefit me? Yeah, yeah. You know what has he got to offer me? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? And that's a lot. That's an important thing because it's like you should honor yourself, your sister. Yeah. Or sister. yeah. Because I will offer him X, Y, Z. Yeah, yeah. As you understand, I will be his wife. Yeah. I will be serving wife. Yeah. I'll have children with him, yeah. inshallah, yeah. and I will give him children, inshallah. Yeah. yeah. And I will respect him and show him affection and love and mercy, mm. etc. Mm. But I need, as a woman, I need that security. Mm. I need that physical protection. Yeah, yeah. I need that financial protection mm. and security. Mm. Can he give it? Do you understand? Yeah. And not be blurred by, you know, he, he he's Arabic <laughs> or he's Tajweed. <laughs> or, do you understand? Even that, there's a good aspect that yeah, yeah. it's not enough. He's a student of knowledge. Yeah, he's a student of knowledge. Uh, by the way, I'm not degrading. Yeah, we don't mean to degrade. Yeah. But, Allah, honestly, you know, as what's the saying? Literally, and if every, every single house, or you know, behind the meaning of it, it's not the actual literal meaning, but it's like behind closed doors, there's always something that there's secrets, you know, there's always some sort of hidden yeah. stuff that maybe it's not made apparent because someone can put on this facade yeah. and this thobe, or like you said, this code, or the Arabic yeah. language, or Quran. I mean, like, you can change your appearance, literally, a beard takes like a month to grow, a full beard, I think, especially if you're used to shape. You can change your appearance in a month. Mm. Someone's been Muslim for a month. Do you understand? Like, do you, you need to be careful. Like, you feel God. If you could, we're not saying it's haram mm. to marry a Muslim. Been, but just be mindful of what you're doing. Do you understand? Just be mindful of what you're doing. And also ask about, you know, at the end of the day, if he's been Muslim for a month, that's fine. But ask about his manners even before Islam. Yeah, his past, yeah. Because there are things that are from your character. It's mm. not going to just, like you're Muslim, khalas. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, you become a different person of course, of course. entirely. No. Mm. There's, what, what was this person's past? Mm. Before, Islam, before Islam, was he was he someone that was close to his mother? Or did, did he have a family unit, uh, which, uh, you know, he respected? Was he into gangs? Was he into crimes? At the end of the day, it's, we're not talking about whether it's forgiven, whether it's not forgiven. Mm, we're yeah. talking about a person's uh, character. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Because there's certain things that's instilled within you that's going to take a long time to, to take it out. undo. Do you understand? It's, it's not going to just go in a week or a month. And this is why you find the serious brothers, they, the serious, the really serious brothers, they don't even think about marriage when they become Muslim. You know that? Mm, yeah. they, the really serious ones, yeah, they're yeah. like, bro, I've got so much work to do on myself, I don't even want not. They, obviously, they got the desire, but yeah. they're like, they know. They want to work on themselves. They think with intellect, like, you know what? I'm not getting any distraction. I'm not getting any woman involved, or any sister involved in my life while I'm in this stage. I have a lot of trials that I'm going through. Yeah. I'm going to work on it. If I need to fast, I'm going to fast. If I need to pray more, I need to pray more. If yeah. I need to change this, if I need to get a job, if I need to s- stop hanging around with people, I need to lose, cut these people loose. I'm going to make these changes. Mm. When I'm ready to be a father, then I will marry. Yeah, Do you yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. Akhi, wallah, so, it's, it's so, so good that you mentioned that, Akhi, man. Alhamdulillah. Because, um, honestly, because it's like, when you say it, there's so many things that the person could have had before Islam, or even before started started practicing. That's yeah. like born Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, and you have to look at it, and by this, I don't mean in general, but look towards how he was with his family, like you said, yeah. and how his family was as well. Okay, and see his upbringing. You can dig so deep to find out. Is this person, and I give you a simple example, okay? And I'm just gonna draw this as an example, but I'm not linking it to marriage, but I'm just trying to make a picture, create some sort of image here. When you go for jobs interview, okay? Because alhamdulillah, I've got a lot of experience going for job interviews and I've seen behind closed doors how the HR recruit people. When they look at your CV, but some, let's say I'm a recruit, I'm looking at your CV, and within the past two years, you've had five different positions. And each one you stayed approximately six months. I'm not going to recruit you for my yeah. company. What's the reason? It's mm. very basic. Yeah. You don't have any commitment. You're yeah. not responsible. You can't literally commit to one specific role and mm. stay there. Let's say it was 
in a span of 15 years, you had five jobs. I know, you know what, this guy I'm bringing to my company, he's going to last and give us, we're going to benefit from him for the next five years. We know we don't have to worry about anyone else. So we can spend on him yeah. and make him better, up, you know, up his skills yeah. and all this stuff. Promote him. Promote him and what have you. So now look at now, why I drew that picture was because when you look at someone now that has been around, a brother or sister, they've been around, you know, they've had so many relationships, for example. Um, maybe they've, you know, they've had houses that they've rented and they've moved from A to B. They've lived in so many locations and so many other things. They Very unstable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They've been in gangs and this. And I'm not saying, wallahi, I'm not saying by this that a sister should not consider someone who's got past. Afallahu yeah. amma salaf. You know, Allah, if he's made tawbah and what have you, says past, alhamdulillah. But we're just saying be a bit more careful specifically for the vulnerable sisters that are reverse that yeah. don't really have that Muslim, you know, backbone to lean on with regards to their family members. But regardless of the past, that main aspect is obviously that's something that can be looked into yeah, and yeah. used as a deciding factor. But it's the fact that now is he responsible? That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's well. what I mean. Yeah. Like carrying that because if he's someone that's, you know, it's like if you're if you're a grown man and you don't have an income and you're not working and you not you not have stability you don't have stability for yourself. Yeah, yeah. How are you going to give stability to somebody else? Of course, of course. You but that's what I was linking it. I didn't yeah, mean yeah. past like 10 yeah, years. Yeah. I meant like, for example, you said, you yeah. know, he just started practicing. Yeah, yeah. But yet, Definitely. just just a month ago, he was yeah. moving from A to B. So yeah. it's like, we have to be very careful from that. I think, I think that's okay. enough for this yeah. reverse. This is, and we can go into more yeah. detail. But now for the men, for the brothers, the advice I personally would give, you know, let's say they're looking, is number one, you've seen someone that you're interested in. Go through the halal method from get go. Forget even approaching her, talking to her. Mm. Okay, let's say because sometimes you find. Let's talk about the reality. Most of the time, it's in you know A levels, okay, or sixth form. Yeah. Like they're at that age, you know, where maybe he's got some sort of part time job or he's got a job on the side. He's got the capability to get married. Let's say, okay, and he's about to leave or he's in uni, or whatever. So there's a. There's, but even. Mm. He wants. To, he plans to marry her in two years. He just wants to. Yeah. Uh, engage. Exactly. exactly, which is obviously does have the money, mm. but he's thinking, you know what? Once I do my studies, you know, we'll be we'll we'll do the act, and um, I want to speak to your parents. And once we both finish our education and we uh, graduated or whatever, then we'll marry. Yeah, okay, that's another thing, Subhanallah, because I was actually going to get into that. Jazakallah khair. So before even me talking about that, but let's just say, how should he approach or inform that potential wife that he's interested? Straight away get in contact with the will. Okay, the so brother will be like, how though? You know, I don't, she's in school, how am I going to talk to her? You can easily, let's say you've got a sister, make your sister speak to her and inform her, okay, that you know someone is interested, okay? Or it could be the fact that maybe you've seen her in terms of, you know, you've seen the fact that her father collects her from school yeah. or college or uni or whatever. Somehow you get in contact with her or you find out where her father prays in the masjid. Now, I'm saying this to you because a brother recently asked me, Akhi, how do I approach this this brother, this uncle, and I want to get married to his daughter. I'll be honest with you, okay? An uncle is not going to respect you if you go up to him and say, Salam alaikum, uncle. Hope you shall My name's Abdullah, and I want to get married to your daughter. He's going to be like, w Where do you come from? Yeah. Coming up to me like yeah. that. And, and that's, 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 yeah, that's for just those reality. That, that's, that's reality. Yeah. That's reality. Your uncle's going to come, you're going to come to an uncle and approach him after Salatul Jum'ah and be like, I want to marry your daughter. He's going to be like, Look at this guy. Get out of my face. Shouting, yeah. yeah, get my face. What kind of manners do you have? Where do you yeah, come from? Yeah. So that's not the way, Ikhwani. The best way, I think, is okay, you found out that this is the father of your potential spouse that you want you're, you're interested in mm. okay make your get that um how did i say that to yeah, and yeah, yeah. literally be like try to you try your utmost best yeah. to introduce yourself to yeah. him okay just tell you you know give acquaintance, salam yeah. acquaintance yeah give salam whatever make yourself try and be in that place where you're going to that masjid every now and again when you can don't approach him directly rather speak to someone that you know i'm just kind of i'm trying to give you like a, a method practically that could work go on <laughs> How did you do it? How did I do yeah. it? I'll be honest with you. My, like, okay, before I say how I did it, let me just finish off this, this scenario, because I'll, I'll be honest yeah, and I'll I say I won't forget that. Okay, don't <laughs> worry, <laughs> don't worry. Um, so, like, speak to the uncle that, had, sorry, speak to the friend of the uncle, or yeah. someone that you know there is there. And if you, if you think some brothers are a bit shy, you know, maybe they're 18 or 21, yeah. 22, whatever, they're a bit shy to go and approach the uncle. Have someone represent you, mm. okay? It could be a friend, 
It could be your teacher mm. that maybe knows the uncle or whatever. And have someone give you like some sort of recommendation, Tezkiya. To be able to be like, okay, there's a brother that's interested. And, you know, can we have his, you know, are you interested in marrying your daughter? Because you don't even know, maybe he's not even interested in marrying his daughter, getting married until she finishes something or whatever. So it could be like a clash mm. that you can reach him at a stage where he's not planning it. So he'll reject you on, upon that basis. And then you'll be, you'll be heartbroken. So what you should do, try and approach someone that knows him. See the situation. Is she... Does she want to get married? Does he want to get married? And usually you find, unfortunately, because of the society we live in, they go college together, they, they're actually both interested, and they don't know what to do next, yeah. dates or not dates or whatever. So if it's the case where you kind of are both interested, then she needs to speak to her father, really and truly. She needs to let him know that I want to get married, and there's a brother. And then he needs to approach. So like I said, the masjid, you've approached him, you've gone there once or twice, you've spoken to one of his friends, and then once you've spoken to one of his friends, khalas, it's done. Get the number, you ring. Whether he says no or not, you've done it the halal. Yeah. You know? Inshallah, that will have blessing. And if it's not meant to, then Allah will give exactly. you better. Exactly. If it's not Because exactly. you tried to fear Allah and avoid that which is haram. Exactly. And also, Akhi, mm. like they should present the reasons as to why they should be chosen. Say, I am studying this, I'm going to graduate. With also, this. like they should present their reasons because yeah. a lot of dads. Okay, realistically speaking, they don't look at religion. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. They look at finance, they look at stability, etc. Yeah. So just present, look, uncle, you know, I'm studying this, I'm going to be doing this, and um, I plan to, do, you know, work as whatever an engineer or what have mm. you. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, so I'll be graduating and we'll be working, and I want to marry your daughter, and, mm. uh, you know, I would like you know to speak to you further about it don't just don't, don't just, just drop go, it yeah don't, don't just go in like um like he has to agree does mm. that make sense mm, yeah, yeah let him know that he's in charge and he has authority respect isn't it? yeah that's the respect isn't yeah. it because that's his daughter yeah he's brought her up all these years exactly without you're you. coming here and you want to you, take yeah, her over like <laughs> in one day you're like Khalas, let's go <laughs> it doesn't work like that yeah. and like, I, well, like we have to kind and of it shouldn't work like that yeah but we have to instill this and in, in like you know repetitively we have to repeat this to the youth and make it like so understandable that it doesn't work like that the world is bigger than you mm. you know for him in his eyes he's probably seen a potential good husband that's probably older than you more stable mm. you know and probably closer to the family or yeah. in the community so yeah. that's that's uh, look what i'm trying to get at is ikhwani there's bigger people that are more established and more known to that you know future father-in-law that you would like for mm. you know to marry his daughter so you have to kind of come out as if you know you're in need of his uh, help approval yeah, and, and help, help yeah. yeah you know he doesn't, he's not in need of you kind of thing you got to win his heart before you even win the girl's heart exactly exactly <laughs> you yeah. got to win <laughs> you got to win his win him over man that's i think that's the only way like he well, has like, to really like you your character and you know take to you and he, you know if allah wants to place that in his heart yeah subhanallah it will happen 100% Do you understand and he will be like you know what this guy, he, you know, he appreciated this guy. He came up to me. And even like you said, it's possible. Like he had someone already set up. And then he, he, he was so blinded by his financial status. He didn't see these, his mannerisms. So when he sees these beautiful manners from you. Exactly. He's like, wait a minute. That guy, you know, he doesn't even call me uncle. Or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah, or yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. that guy. You know, he doesn't even talk about religion or Allah. SubhanAllah. You know, and I and you might actually, it's, it might even be a form of doubt. It's like, why haven't I not even thought about this? I've, I've never seen that guy pray. I've never seen that guy, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. you know, speak about the religion. This, this, this young man's come to me, you know, respecting me and showing me this, you know, this is authority. That I deserve, you know. Maybe the other guy he looks down upon the dad. Yeah, exactly. Like, cause you know, I'm gonna take your daughter. I make fifty k yeah. a month. He's coming with his yeah, approach. He's, that he's, I'm yeah, rich. like this arrogant. I'm doing you a favor. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm doing you a favor. Yeah. And I'm gonna give you that. Like, and and then again, there's a message to the fathers. Like, you know, they have to really think and be like. A lot of the fathers wouldn't, probably wouldn't be listening to this kind of podcast. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But you know, but they, I think somehow that the daughter has to, the daughters have to speak to their father and, 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 and explain to them that money is not my biggest objective. That's not, that's not my, 
that's not that's not why uh, that's not my primary um, uh, expectations yeah. in a husband. Yeah, Do you understand yeah, like yeah. how much money he makes, mm. or what kind of you know car he drives, or you know how expensive his watch is, yeah. or him wearing a suit and stuff. You know he has to make it clear also that my you know what I'm looking for in a husband is a man of religion, a man of character, and that's more preferable for to me than, than a man that's rich. Yeah. Do you understand? So a man of character will carry out the responsibilities of a husband. Because money's not yeah. going to keep them together. Yeah. Yeah, money's not, not going to keep them together. And the old, yeah, and also explain the look, you know, subhanAllah, how often do you hear there's been marriages, you know, where there's, where the walima, or the celebration, they've, you know, they've spent like 40k, 40,000 in one night. SubhanAllah. On the whole, the limousine, yeah. the food. The whole shebang. The whole thing, you yeah. know, yeah. And the clothes and whatever. Mm. Maybe something like 40,000, literally, mm. the whole, the pro procedures, you know, some people even are like a henna party, mm -hmm. you know, this, some mm. cultures and stuff. Yeah, yeah, So they spend so much. Extravagance. Yeah, extravagance yeah. and, and the focus be, being money and mm. the man being able to give the money and facilitate all this. Mm. Yeah. There is no connection, there is no love, there is no looking into the character of that man. Mm. Yeah. And then what happens? Divorce. They get divorced. Yeah, they yeah. get divorced. Within maybe months, maybe even a year. Yeah. The divorce. Yeah. So like, what happened? What is the point of all the effort, all that money? Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't achieved the objective of marriage, which is for it to last, for you know, for, for you to have children, etc. Yeah. And I think on yeah, that actually. note, being Allah, we'll end it until mm -hmm. next time, inshallah. inshallah. Due to the distractions, distractions <laughs> of the kids, may Allah preserve them. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa akhid da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 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 Barakat